Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin, your favorite film critic, and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and movie adjacent popular culture, and you like to see somebody take those things and pick them apart, you're in the right place and you should consider subscribing. I just got back from seeing the new uh, summer blockbuster action thriller from director David Leach, the movie Bullet Train starring Brad Pitt, and uh, kind of sucks shit. Now I didn't outright hate Bullet Train. Like, I harbor no real ill will towards it. It's not a complete disaster, but I almost wish it was because then I could just casually shit on it and call it a day. But no, there's like just enough that works that it makes everything that doesn't work feel insulting by comparison. Bullet Train is a big budget action thriller in the vein of every movie you have ever seen with a sprawling cast, all playing colorful, cartoonish contract killers. Brad Pitt leads as Ladybug, an unlucky smash and grab specialist trying to square his life of crime with his newfound love of self-betterment. A routine job stealing a briefcase on a bullet train in Japan and turns into a clusterfuck kerfuffle as no less than three other interconnected plots cross over along this exponentially convoluted MacGuffin scramble. There is Bad Bunny as the wolf, a maniac on a path of revenge, Joey King as the prince, a young girl who isn't quite what she seems, Andrew Koji as the father, a man caught in a death trap to save his ailing son, Hiroyuki Sonata as the father's father? and the thrice-named duo of Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry as Tangerine and Lemon, a pair of brothers safeguarding the briefcase Ladybug is after. There's actually way more players on the board than that in the movie, uh, the, a lot of characters, and some hit-or-miss stunt casting, like some phenomenal and some uh, outrageous. When I got to the big bad of the film and I saw the actor who was playing him and how much fun that actor was having, I popped immediately. But that scene comes after another piece of stunt casting, like a little cameo, that made me so mad, I wanted to throw my phone at the screen. I was, I was viscerally offended. Now, I went in expecting this to be at least watchable. Unlike Chad Stahelski, who has stayed within the walled garden of the John Wick franchise ever since his directorial debut, David Leach, his co-director, has been cranking out inconsistent but largely entertaining action flicks all on his own. Say what you will about the respective failings of Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, and Hobbs and Shaw, but the guy has enough of a touch that his name still carries a little bit of comfort behind it. But for all the genuinely stirring action set pieces and some truly entertaining Looney Tunes-esque gags, there's tons and tons of monotonous setup. And all of it is staged with the same cutesy maximalism every other movie in this repetitive subgenre has long since made stale. Now this is coming from me, a man who has seen Joe Cardahan smoking aces way more times than the average adult human. A man who will, like Jean-Luc Godard before me, watch any movie so long as it has a girl and a gun. But even I have my limits. Bullet Train gets cooking in the second act once every character has been established and every Chekhov's gun has been stashed accordingly. At its best, it settles into this really amusing groove as a violent cartoon about fate, luck, karma, and how the endless cycle of vengeance only begets more and more pain. It's got fun production design, a likable color palette, and a buoyant tone I would have loved to be able to enjoy. But it's constantly and repeatedly too cute by half, with faux clever dialogue that lopes around in concentric circles of winking bullshit I've seen executed better in countless movies made in the last 30 years. Like, I love sugary cinema, I love empty calories, but this made my stomach hurt. Most of the performances are pretty damn good, especially Taylor Johnson and Tyree Henry's chemistry overpowering how awful the latter's English accent is. But it's Brad Pitt doing some of his best comedic work and threading the through line of underrated funny man he has been since smoking up on that couch all the way back in True Romance. Hey, get some, some beer and some, and some cleaning products. But you've seen this before. And you will call every twist and turn, of which there are far too many. Making a movie this hat on a hat makes it near impossible to maintain an effective amount of momentum. It's hard to have a movie called Bullet Train where you have to keep pausing the pace to plottingly set up all the ways the screenwriter thought he could jazz up the Kataro Osaka novel it's based on. And having a movie this claustrophobic uh, be marketed so heavily with IMAX, even though it wasn't shot like with IMAX cameras, I don't believe, I think it's just sort of like tailored to, to like being blown up to IMAX. It's fine, like it looks nice big. I sat in this auditorium, like sort of like the Sontag seat, so I was like very close and like it filled up the screen, it was entertaining enough, but like knowing that this movie is gonna kick nope off of a bunch of premium format screens uh, this week is a huge bummer. Cause like that's a movie that like really, really meets the majesty of IMAX and, and this like doesn't, it's just like loud and abrasive 
and has like a near suicide squad level of like uh, cheesy needle drops like there's just so many and they get less and less effective as the movie goes along all told this is something that like would be like a decent uh, above average thriller on netflix like if you watch Gunpowder Milkshake and you were disappointed and you watched this right after, you'd be like, yo, this is much closer to what I thought that was going to be like. Good job. But this isn't Netflix. You're not watching this uh, at home on, on a MacBook or whatever. Like, you're paying to go to a theater where you could get monkeypox to watch this experience. And I, I just can't fathom doing that. I cannot fathom recommending this movie to people. I didn't even want to go to this screening tonight, if I'm being honest. Like, I thought about just, like, not going. Uh, but I'd already, like, RSVP'd and I don't want to be a dick. I understand the concept of turning off your brain and having fun. But I need to be lulled into having my brain turned off. I spend every waking minute alive wishing my brain would shut the fuck up. But it's not like it was when I was younger. I can't just throw on any movie to escape. I can't just like fire something up and then just be boom, transported to another world of uh, fiction, of drama, of intrigue. Like, it's not the same anymore. I don't, I'm not that spry. I need a bit of foreplay. You gotta warm me up, man. I, I need a big screen. I need a, a loud score. I need uh, captivating characters. I need something. You gotta give me something to make me swallow all the bullshit. Like, if you want me to ignore so many, like, just bad, like, logic problems, like, uncomfortable storytelling, like, all these things that, like, the movie doesn't have, you have to do other things to make me accept that. And this doesn't do that. Like, if you want me to turn my brain off for a big, dumb movie, you gotta ease me into it. You gotta rub my shoulders a bit first, you know? And this movie talks a big game, but when it comes down to business, it just can't get it up. For the record, I think it looks better than like 80% of The Gray Man. I think it's like a more fun movie than The Gray Man. Uh, so there's that going for it, but that's like such a fucking low bar to clear, right? So Bullet Train. Uh, I don't want to say don't see it, because like there's stuff in it that's entertaining enough to where like you could enjoy yourself, but definitely wait till it hits VOD or whatever. Like this is, you can watch this, you know, on a Plex server or something. Like there's just no reason to leave the house for it. It is not leave the houseable worthy, you know? Uh, sorry, Brad, uh, and a lot of the people involved. Sorry, Bad Bunny. Sorry, WWE Superstar Bad Bunny. Fantastic work. Uh, only six minutes of screen time, but them's the breaks. That's Bullet Train. If you're thinking about going to see it, don't. If you do, tell me what you thought about it. Uh, so that, I mean, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys love it, you know. Uh, and if you do, I want to know about it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, please subscribe. I'll have new videos out. I have another new video out in a couple of days, actually. There's another movie I'm about to watch later after I edit this. And I'll have a video about that uh, before the end of the week, I think, if I like it. We'll see. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for just everything. I love you guys. Uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.